Chat, this is a long video. Hidden behind border patrol vehicles and makeshift tents were hundreds upon hundreds of migrants. Wait, didn't even know what is it? Who hopped the US Mexico border in the past couple you guys, of years. Did he re upload it then? It was a shocking sight to see. Oh, it's part two. Is it good or not? All around the world, herded like cattle on the cold desert floor, sitting in silence, awaiting an uncertain future. Oh, you have a chance? What not? It's a good video. <laughs> Despite these conditions, spirits are generally high. <laughs> because most of these people have traveled days, weeks, and even months just to get here. About three quarters of them are single males. But there are also many children. America is at a breaking point with record levels of illegal immigration. These people's lives oh, are the three. center of the national conversation. But they could care less. They've finally made it to the land of opportunity. A nation allegedly founded upon the principles it's right -wing of shit and radical individuality um, where anyone this from channel any is, walk of life it, 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 can make something. It's more open to like left ideas. That's what they call them detainees. They've been walking on this road. It's this more road runs for, sure. for 12 miles, 12 or 13 miles. What it does is it parallels our border fence. Mm -hmm. On the other side of it, on the Mexican side of it, is Mexican Highway 2. Mm -hmm. So the cartels have a really easy job. So they just bring the people more, more left off left. of Highway 2 mm -hmm. and then through the wall. The wall is, has many of those cuts that I told you about earlier yeah. where they run the people through. And so the, the immigrants just walk down this road. Right, so as you guys can probably see right here, that's a group of five migrants who just hopped the border and they're walking directly into Border Patrol custody to join the seated group of migrants that we just encountered. So typically when you think of the border, at least me personally, I thought it was like people hop and then try to evade Border Patrol and make their way to a, a large U.S. city to start a new life. But in this case, you can see they are putting themselves directly in the custody of Border Patrol to begin the asylum seeking process. Like they're not trying to... Uh, yeah, but you, or anything. you, you can't claim asylum all the time, though. It has to be a reason for it, right? want to go on camera. Normally, agents are not allowed to be interviewed, and all press requests are typically deferred to a public information officer who rarely ever responds. But in this instance, the agent seemed exhausted and eager to tell me what was going on. Now, there's very few of them evading. How come? Well, because they allowed them in. They don't evade because they'll let them come in. They'll. Chat. Chat, what I'm getting at this chat is that they throw away their ID, a, a, a lot of them, in, uh, in those, right? So they're like basically un unidentifiable, right? But since they're in custody of the fucking United States or whatever, now they're, they're their responsibility, right? So now it's like they kind of have to take care of them, otherwise it's like, but what do you do? You can't just fucking send them to die or whatever, right? They take them up to Phoenix, give them a $3,000 oh, we'll and a cell phone and send them wherever they want to go. You get a court date, you have two years to show up in court. That's the reason I give them a phone, because they're saying if you, they don't give me a phone, I don't know when I'm supposed to go to court. So they give them a phone. At first, I was confused what the Border Patrol agent meant when he kept referring to they. To the naked eye, it appears that Border Patrol is the one handling and processing the migrants. But they're only the first step in a chain of bureaucratic authority that goes up to the Department of Homeland Security, then finally up to the Department of Justice's Executive Office for Immigration Review, which is more or less controlled by the Biden administration, who've taken a much more open arms approach to immigration after pulling back Title 42 just about a year ago. But despite pushing for more lax border laws in comparison with President Trump, the wall just got 10 feet taller, believe me. Biden hasn't done anything to make the process of applying for citizenship any faster. In fact, it still takes between 18 to 24 months to get a response on a citizenship application. And it's actually possible to be denied citizenship if you fail to memorize and regurgitate fun facts about the history of America. How many amendments does the Constitution have? It has 27 amendments. Good. Which group of people was taken to America and sold as slaves? Uh, Africans. Good. Excellent. So it makes sense why a lot of migrants, many of whom are facing desperate circumstances, avoid the citizenship application process altogether. I wonder if my great-great-grandparents, who were economic yeah, sure there's a reason for this fled family. Ireland in the wake of the potato famine, I, I experienced don't such an arduous that. process when they arrived to America illegally. Unlike these migrants who arrived at the southern border, my family arrived on boats to Ellis Island 115 years ago. Much like Roberto and Alberto, who we interviewed in our previous episode, Arizona Border Crisis, they found themselves in a strange new land with pennies to their name. They had no particular...
Guys, it's citizenship. You're not a citizen. It's your main place of, of life or whatever. Guys, guys, I don't think it's a fun fact. It's more about uh, of being interested in where you live and showing that, 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 that you care about where you're going to be. I, I don't think it's that big of a problem. I think it's more like it's because it's just kind of strange the way they're doing it. That's not, I don't think it's a problem. Guys, it's like, um, guys, it's where you're going to be. It's where you dedicate your life to, right? If you, in two years, you don't know what, like, like things like a like like kind of kind of basic kind of fundamental knowledge of the country. I mean, I think you think you don't just don't care. Then why 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 should you plan? Them, but what they it. did have was the willpower and what determination to work as hard as they could, with the hopes of one day providing a brighter future for their family, and it worked. And that's all thanks to Grandpa Jerry, who died 30 years before I was born. I wonder if he was asked who Paul Revere was or what the Boston Tea Party was all about. Was there a concern back then that these migrants weren't American enough to join our society? Or is that way of thinking a new phenomenon driven by the paranoia of a white minority? An analysis of census data from the Brookings Institute projects the number of white Americans will fall below 50% for the first time ever in about 20 years. Oh my God, no way. Or perhaps way. it's less about race and more about the burden of inheriting global Can poverty you fucking when we believe have that? so many problems of our own. I guess times I have can't changed. I can't believe that. Too. It's not like there was fentanyl or cartels back then. And most immigrants plan to move to America forever, not stack up money here and go back home. I don't have the answers, but I do have a lot of questions. One question in particular. How can we as Americans expect to propagandize the entire world with our dream through Hollywood, the music industry, and the testimonies of self-made American billionaires while simultaneously exploiting the labor, crops, and raw earth materials of developing nations, freezing the economies of our political opponents through trade sanctions, and creating rival drug cartels with our insatiable appetite for cocaine, fentanyl, meth, and heroin and not expect a global economic refugee crisis at the southern border but that being said no uh, matter where you stand on illegal immigration not the best I think thing we can time. all agree that our system as it currently stands is broken we have a we have a legal process guys 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 that that's a pretty far um connection between the two guys that's a pretty intense fucking connection chill the fuck out bro for for, for immigrants bro. And, and it's it's being what done by it? some, but it's it takes forever. Yeah, you know, so it needs to be sped up for those mm -hmm. those with skills and those want to come and build skills and and be Americans and be proud to be here and work and better their lives and their families. And the treacherous journey that they have to take across the border and through the desert, you're losing lives that way. And so uh, I just uh, hope in 2024 we can rectify this problem and help those who want to get here legally. It appeared that all of the migrants who were walking directly into Border Patrol's hands were approaching from a westbound road called Puerto Blanco Drive, a narrow dirt pathway running Guys, through the national- in my opinion, some sort, of, some sort of slippery slope. If you say, oh dude, if, since you've done this, you should take all of this and you're, you should expect that. Okay, okay. Some of, a, some of your private companies operate in other countries for the production. Okay, then enjoy the drugs and the deaths, and the booms, enjoy fucking dying, enjoy the fucking bonk, enjoy that, you deserve it. Yo, chill, whoa, chill, bro. I, I think there's some sort of middle ground somewhere, like, what the fuck? So like, I decided to drive down if you could justify to that, see if I could find some migrants to speak to. First, we see some signage warning us of what's to come. Well, I, Truthfully, it's, it's, I don't expect to see much. But as I continue down the road, they seem to be spawning out of thin air from all angles. Most of them in a rush, we're told, because their cartel coyotes told them they had to get to the Border Patrol facility by nightfall in order to be transferred to a larger processing center or dropped off in a major city. But I noticed a group of a few of them walking pretty slowly, so I call them over to the car to see if they want to talk. How you guys doing? Where are you guys from? Senegal. From Senegal? Yeah. How you got, you're in America, how does it feel? What's the, what's the plan? Tradition, traducteur. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Can you guys tell me about your life in Senegal? How was your life in Senegal? How are you guys doing? Welcome to the United States. Where are you, where are you from, man? Senegal. Senegal. You guys are all from Senegal? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Do you speak any English? Uh, a little. Oh, cool. So how was your guys' life in Senegal? The, the life in Senegal is very, very hard. You know. mm -hmm. Chaos and unrest Jesus. in Senegal once again. The opposition leader urged supporters to take to the streets to protest against his jail sentence. The, government, the political government is, uh, is bad 
voilà, a position are very difficult uh, to, to, to manifest her, 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 her problem. Yes. We are here uh, to, 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 to get another life for our family, yeah. for our people. We are very tired in Senegal. Senegal is very hard. That's why we, we come here. Uh, to, to get another life, no? Yeah. yeah. The, the American people is a good is a good people. Yeah. Donc, they are democracy. They are they are they are good life, you know. What what kind of work do you want to do? Me, uh, I am I was a soldier in Senegal. I I do two two years in the army, you know. After my two years, I I was a a, a security private. No. In security. security. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Security period. So you're gonna look for some a security job? Don't know. But yeah. yeah. Hey man, yeah. well best of luck man. I appreciate you guys. Gracias. Hope everything goes well. Okay. See you guys later. See you man. Thanks for talking to us. Yeah, see you guys. Bye guys. After stopping to speak for a bit, the group of Senegalese men headed westbound toward the border patrol facility. We, however, kept driving. As you continue to drive along the border wall, you can see people popping out from under the wall in a specific part of the fence that's being guarded by an SUV on the Mexican side. Nearby, I see a group of mothers and children who appear to have recently just crossed the wall. They tell me they're migrants from Michoacan. The mother of these children, who personally financed their trip, says she's willing to talk to me. My question is, how was your life in Mexico? It's very cruel. There are assaults, mutilation. Sí. ¿Es muy pobre? Sí. ¿Por qué quieres ir a los Estados Unidos? Porque como le comenté, estamos huyendo de la delincuencia y para un futuro para mis hijos. ¿Qué quieres para tus hijos? Pues que estudien allá. ¿Hoy es tu primera vez en los Estados Unidos? Sí, es sí. la primera vez. ¿Y qué piensas? Pues que pues echarle ganas con mis hijos y sí. sacarlos adelante y no... Pues sacarlos de la violencia. ¿Hay mucha violencia? Sí, mucha. Por la gente que andan pues así, como robando, quitando a los niños y todo. ¿Pero es peligrosa para los niños también? Sí, es peligroso. ¿Qué tipo de trabajo pre prefieres? Pues yo dependí de un trabajo que sea un robo y todo. ¿Y tienes uh, planes para asilo? Sí, tengo para, para eso vengo, para que me den apoyo. ¿Qué, si ¿Qué significa asilo? Pues que ayudan a las personas con los niños que vienen de, de México para acá. ¿Es una proceso fácil? Pues yo digo que sí. Uh -huh. ¿Y vas a solo hablar con la amiga y decir yo tengo problemas en mi país? Sí, o? así sí. es. Sí. ¿Tienes una ciudad que quieres ir? ¿Qué ciudad en California? Uh, Victorville. Guys, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh -huh. ¿Tienes familia en Victorville? Sí. Chat. If it takes one year to spawn one in, and you have 12, and then the youngest is like five, isn't the oldest going to be like 17? Tengo familia. Fue tan caro la viaje? Sí, fue caro. ¿Cuánto? Diez, diez mil. Diez mil para cada persona o todo? Para los viajes y más aparte que nos piden. Doce. Doce. I'm making sense and you're making sense. You need to work for a year for that, right? Yes. ¿Y tienes uh, miedo de deportar? Pues sí tengo. Sí. Pero no, no sabes ahora si es en es tu futuro. Pues no sé. So, Dependiendo ya de que esté allá con la migra, ellos deciden. ¿Qué piensas sobre la migra? Pues yo pienso que nos van a ayudar, ¿no? Para eso vamos. Que ojalá nos ayude. Yeah. Cuando tú fuiste joven, ¿tienes sueños de los Estados Unidos? Pues sí, sí tengo sueños. ¿Por qué? Pues porque... Pues dicen que hay mucho trabajo bien y todo. ¿Piensas que todas las personas en México quieren ir aquí? Yo digo que sí. Okay. ¿Qué piensas? <laughs> ok, muchas gracias. Sí. Hasta luego. Sí. Sí. Midway through my shoot, I had an interesting revelation. It seemed that almost every migrant of Latin American descent, particularly Mexican that I talked to, said they were leaving their hometown because of threats from gangs or being kidnapped by the cartel. In our previous episode, yo, 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 Arizona yo. border crisis. Yo, they said it's being weird. They said being weird. Yeah, yeah, there is a lot of fucking, there is a lot of work. And yeah, there is a lot of jobs. And yeah, a lot, a lot of fucking privileged fucking American Andes, unfortunately, they don't, don't want to fucking do those fucking jobs, man. They, if people don't, there is, there is a, what the fuck are you on about? There's a fucking ass fuck ton. People don't want to do shit, motherfucker. Have you ever hired people, dude? Because you guys are, you guys live in a fucking, in some sort of fucking, in a, like some sort of bubble, motherfucker. What is wrong with you? We spoke to two different migrants, Alberto and Roberto, who reported similar stories. 
with their, with their conditions and, and some of their place of work and what, and what they are used to in their country, you know how hardworking some, some of these folks are? They're incredibly fucking hardworking. They're incredibly disciplined. It's ridiculous, dude. And the fact that you're like, oh, dude, oh, yeah, oh, sure, work, dude. Yeah, some of the shit that you won't fucking do, motherfucker. What the fuck is wrong with you? Por los carteles nos sacaron. Se okay. sacaron de las casas. ¿Qué ciudad de México, Dios? En Veracruz. Es que gobierna el cartel de Jalisco. Sí. Sí, pues te piden cota y como si no tienes dinero, ¿de dónde les vas a dar? Sí. Y pues te sacan de tus casas. Que somos el grupo Matacetas. Y estamos amenazados que no podemos regresar. Hay mucho movimiento de eso, de las drogas y todo. Sí. Muy feo. However, many locals and law enforcement Yo, personnel chat. believe... Listen, chat. Guys, guys, guys. I know chat, you may guys say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm privileged, like, whatever. Guys, guys. I've had a lot of rentals and a lot of houses in LA, whatever, chat. And I hired a bunch of people for a lot of shit. Like, guys, I'm talking, like, in, in total over the years, chat, like, hundreds of people that did, like, fucking landscaping and construction jobs and something. That, I, I, I went down, I, my roof broke a bunch of times. And I remember, dude, these guys, like, they went so fucking hard. They're insane, dude. And then, dude, I gave, like, a fucking $100 tip, $200 tip. Bro, they're like so. I it, it was like something else, man. It was something else, bro. These are very hard work. They're being disingenuous it's when they make these sorts of claims because applying for asylum they, they requires were, were like the proof of persecution and shit. imminent danger. During the asylum-seeking process, it's typically not enough to declare that you're simply poor and looking for a better life elsewhere. You have to provide ample justification that it's actually dangerous for you to stay in your hometown or your home country. And even then, many claims are rejected. And so claiming that the cartel is personally after you is a really easy way to be granted asylum, especially because there's no real intelligence apparatus to confirm or deny the authenticity of this threat. The concerned citizen of mysterious origin who we met at the Arizona border last episode Claims that cartel coyotes that control the human smuggling route around the Lukeville Gringo Pass area are coaching these migrants in how to. Look, let's wash my hands. Let's wash my hands. Oh, 10 seconds. Chance, some of do it right, though. I don't even understand. Like, yeah, it's not all like that, you know? Like, yeah, there are bad apples, but like, some, some of them do it right, yeah? And it's not like all like, oh, dude, oh, dude, these guys, are, it's just fucking drug and violence and blah, blah, blah. blah. It, it, like, Dude, oh, chill, bro. It's not all like that. But to explain themselves to press and border patrol agents. The cartel or somebody is coaching them because they virtually say the same thing. Oh, that their their lives are in danger from gangs in these areas and they've been threatened with kidnapping. And we've even found a notebook um, that had those kind of answers written down as if the person was rehearsing these statements to say when they were, you know, when they confronted the border patrol. To be honest, this made perfect sense to me. I'm not for a second dismissing that narco violence has had a significantly negative impact on the civilian population of Mexico, especially in places like Ciudad Juarez, where hundreds of women have been found murdered for no apparent reason. But I found it difficult to believe that cartels were systematically kidnapping local children in their own communities and squeezing their non-affiliated, already struggling parents for ransom pesos. It seemed like they had bigger fish to fry, like supplying the open-air trank market of Philadelphia or the fentanyl market of San Francisco. That being said, even if these migrants were lying or at least greatly exaggerating the cartel threat, they've still gone to extreme lengths to reach the United States. So their situation back home was obviously pretty hopeless. If anything, it's more sad that they have to present their situation in this way in order to be able to engage our immigration courts. However, some... Guys, if they do it right, though, Chad, is there not a way to be able to achieve that legitimately and do it right? Like, if you just, if you want to do it the correct way, it, does that work? Or they have to do it because it does never work. Some people, like the gentleman we interviewed, believe even the poverty they claim to come from is also a lie. The part that alarms me, what you used to see, you know, 10 years ago, you would find these cheap Chinese-made oh. camouflage backpacks what? that were purchased by the crossers in these border towns. And they would get across the border, the backpacks would invariably break or something like that. Now we're finding these Louis Vuitton leather backpacks. We found one just the other day that was lying on the ground we open it up in the top compartment there was a bottle of cologne and a ucb c cord huh? neck pillows this is a different demographic completely what? i decided to walk through the sonoran desert to see if what the man was wait dude okay okay you can say designer shit is dog shit and you're right right 
but at least the build quality is just really fucking strong. Why do you think they're broken? Because they're fucking fake, you absolute moron. If they're fucking broken down and shit like that, because they're just fake, they're just replicas that are worth like four bucks. I was saying what was the true fuck? by inspecting backpacks left behind by migrants. <sighs> you guys, guess what it is? USB-C charger. Ugh. Shh. Staying fresh. Another luxury item. Yeah, this is a, it's kind of like a passport. It's an international certificate of vaccination some bag stamped like a lifestyle. Uh, the lifestyle. Republic of Guinea. Let's see what else is in here. Oh, and lo and behold, the aforementioned, totally authentic Gucci slipper. We spoke to this gentleman earlier, if you guys remembered, who mentioned that these migrants, unlike the old migrants, are bringing like luxury items like Gucci purses, Louis Vuitton flip-flops. Louis Vuitton! Prada bags and stuff like that. And so as you can see here, someone has left behind a, a Gucci slipper, but as you can see, it's not actually Gucci. It says on the heel right here, Zaza. Obviously in oh, America, Zaza. Zaza no, I love those. Weed. Zaza, with Zaza. With Zaza. 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 Best weed everywhere. Come on now. We don't bullshit. But internationally, I would assume it is a, a variant knockoff of Gucci with the pattern, which leads to another theme, which is the mass production of knockoff luxury and designer goods in the third world. I don't know if you guys have yeah, been to Vietnam sell that. or it's Nigeria before, shit before, the, the, the fucking, place is fucking Gucci down. Another thing I noticed along the border fence were blue flags and water stations that were placed every quarter mile on the way toward the border patrol facility. Yes, yeah, so as you guys can see, pretty much all along the border fence, like this entire way, every quarter mile or so, you'll see these giant blue flags. I'm not sure who puts them there, but they're basically what I'm assuming to be emergency medical services. They have a, like a, a giant thing of water right here. So if you want to get some water, you can obviously get some water and shit. They have cups here. Upon like a, further like research, fire. these tanks of water and flags Check are left points, behind yeah. by humane borders, aka Fronteras Compasivas, an Arizona-based nonprofit that sets up hundreds of water stations along the border to provide hydration to migrants which in the summertime, as temperatures can rise to above 120 degrees in the desert, can be a matter of life or death. People dying out in the desert. They were dying because they didn't have any water. Yeah, so yeah, next... yeah. And believe it or not, if, if they die on your side of the fucking border, dude, it's your responsibility. These are like your deads. And dude, I hate to say it, dude, dude but fucking, dude, uh, 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 yeah, it is. If, so, if, somebody, if somebody dies on, in, on your soil, that's your responsibility, literally. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I'm correct about this. Yeah, it is. Another article. There's money to remove and shit. Two people dying because they didn't have any water. So the third day, it was a mother and a daughter that died out here in the desert because they didn't have water. So I got pissed off. I said, I have to do something seven days a week. We're out here in the field putting out water for the migrants. If you're interested in donating, please go to humaneborders.org slash donate. Last year no. alone, nearly a hundred... Because if somebody jumps the border and dies right there, what do you think the U.S. does? They say, guys, this is, a, this is a call out on Discord, guys. Whose body is this? Come pick him up, you got 24 hours. Guys, what the fuck do you think they do? 100 migrants died crossing the border in that five mile section where we filmed this video. And the sheer number of migrant deaths that occur in the Arizona desert as a whole, solely as a result of dehydration, is staggering. This in mind, 75% of migrant deaths happen in the summer months. So it's no surprise the winter months of December and January see the highest migrant traffic by a large margin. What's up, right there? Where are you coming from? Yeah, I'm from West Africa. Oh shit. From Guinea, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's no easy ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by God and power, you know. How, Respect. How, yeah. long, how long has your journey been so far? Oh, though, nothing to say. Mm -hmm. That's fucked up, though. How'd you get to Mexico? Oh, yeah, so. <laughs> let me, uh, so let me drink some a lot of water fresh mm -hmm. after that so we can talk, okay? You want some water? Yeah. We got some, some brother, we got some. How long ago did you leave Guinea? It's been a two week. I live okay. in Guinea. Like so Guinea, more, more Guinea. Mm -hmm. So after Guinea, so Senegal, Dakar, mm -hmm. to take to the plane to go Istanbul, uh, 28 hours to his car. Then Istanbul to Bogota, Bogota, San Salvador, San Salvador, Nicaragua. So you pick up the car mm -hmm. to go to the borderline to Nicaragua and on. Chad, Chad, this is why claiming asylum doesn't really make sense at this point, right? Because because with, with all the travels, all the options that are happening, 
you're bound to find another asylum country before getting all the way out. That's why it doesn't really make sense because there are a lot of other countries that are also open for asylum and can help, whatever, but then they do all this, blah, 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 and go to America. Like, does that make sense? Honduras, you know, then you go to immigration Honduras just to take, to, to take one paper, mm -hmm. you know, uh, then take a bus, bus, uh, Honduras, Honduras, Guatemala, Guatemala, oh. Mexico. No, you're Mexico, right, chat. The cop is oh, no, the, the, uh, good cop, chat. Got it, man. The plane was locked in. The, the ticket was one way. He, they, they found him. It goes nowhere else but those places. They have to go on that route. They're stuck on the flight path. They cannot get off of it. It's locked in. This Mexico is fucked up, though. The cops. It's yeah, a bug. Yeah, my bro. It's a scuff. Yeah. It's like getting the Mexican border out. Patrol. Mexican boy, Joe, I spend in, I spend in uh, $5,000. They extorted you. Yeah, it's, yeah, though. The guy is taking me in my watch, my heart, in my airport, you know, because I don't have the money, man, you know, in my pocket. I use my car, yeah, my bank, my, my, my car bank, you know. So you finally made it to Mexico, and then what happened? They finally Mexico, uh, we take a, uh, one, one, one bus to go to uh, Chapachula. Mm -hmm. Chapachula is too far. Then, yeah, Chapachula, we take uh, one bus again to continue to uh, Ariaga. Ariaga again, we take a taxi, the yellow car, yellow car then bike, Jesus. bike, a horse, horse, to the three cycles bike, after that, Shujitan, then after Shujitan, uh, Mexico City, Mexico City, we go to the bus station to buy a ticket, Why we take a bus again, 1,070 miles from bus in Mexico City. Exactly, okay. yeah. 340 pesos for that ride. That's value. The city. Exactly. That's value, bro. 2,070 miles. And you ended up near here. Two days and the bus. You know, then when you arrive there, so I make it two days because I met the Spanish, uh, the Mexican girl enter the bus station. She got so much love for me, bro. Yeah, yeah she followed me and, and that's the first the, to the first meet. This is the Mex Mexico bus station. You know, you know her baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to drink one beer again. Though, you know, <laughs> it's popping. Yeah, it's crazy, man. How? Yeah. How? How, how oh, did you do that? Yeah. How did you do that? <laughs> Back. <laughs> it's not easy, but thank God. So what's your what, what's your plan now, bro? <laughs> it's my plan to the next episode. Yeah. After uh, after this uh, uh, these things, but difficult to explain it. Mm. <laughs> but that's in God power. <laughs> As the bro, sun bro began to set and darkness the approached, we figured okay. it was safer to go no, back to the border patrol facility. When we returned, migrant population had doubled, and spirits were considerably lower than they were in the early afternoon when we first arrived. ¿Qué pasa? ¿Tienes hambre? I don't well, need it. I, I would need to get some chat advice. What the man? See. See. That's me. See. What's up, my amigo? I have hunger. See. See. How was your journey? It's bad. I'm dying of hunger. Solo hablo los cantan. Quieres comida? Sí. Okay. Yo tengo. We have food in the car, right? Sí. ¿Qué es tu nombre, amigo? Miguel Yat. Miguel Yat. Miguel Yat. ¿Cuántos años tienes? Tengo 34. Sí. Guys, oh no, oh no, hijas? oh no. Sí, tengo. Guys, I can always see the fucking TikToks, dude. They're gonna come with this shit, dude. They're gonna, they're gonna bring their like Plinko, like Plinko gambling machines or whatever the fuck. But they play the game and then they get like a fucking bottle of water or, so, or a, 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 a fucking sack of rice. Oh no. I can always tengo see it, dude. Hijo. Tengo cuatro, son seis mis hijos, tres varones y tres mujeres. ¿Y ellos viven en Guatemala? No, sí, vivo en Guatemala. Sí. sí. ¿Y por qué viajes a los Estados Unidos? Pues, es que allá no, no tengo claro. terreno. No I tengo see the bro, bro. ¿Dónde vivir? If you know about the Hunger Games, you know. Por esa you razón know. tengo que viajar. Bro. Sí. sí, pero tengo que esperar la voluntad de Dios. 
Sí. ¿Crees en Dios? Sí, soy cristiano. Sí. ¿Católico soy... o no? No, soy evangélico. Sí, soy, crist... soy evangélico. ¿Y qué, qué, qué quieres hacer aquí en los Estados Unidos? Quiero superar, sacar adelante mi, mi familia. ¿Quieres trabajar? Sí, quiero trabajar. ¿Qué tipo de trabajo quieres hacer? Lo que hacer? sea, lo que caiga, yo, yo rasque mi vida. Sí. Sí. ¿Tienes una ciudad que quieres ir o no? Lo que sea. Sí. O mi cuñado me va a encontrar allá en Estados Unidos. Sí. ¿Hoy es tu primera vez en los Estados Unidos? Es mi primera vez. ¿Qué piensas? Sí. Sí, sí estoy pensando en viajar, pero... Lamentablemente no salió muy mal el viaje. Va. ¿Qué lo pasó en el viaje? Pues mire, cuántos días ya llevo un mes de, de, de venir acá y pasar en el bus, los bodegos y así está pasando también. Y aquí no hay comida, no hay nada. Sí. ¿Cuántos eh, días fue tu viaje? 30 días. Me lleva 30 días ahorita, un mes cabal. ¿Fue, sí. ca fue caro? Sí. 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 ¿Cuánto cuesta para todo? ¿Cómo así? ¿Cuánto cuesta para usted viajar? Como 100 mil. Uh -huh. Sí, 100 mil me están cobrando. Sí, y como para pagar eso, si no, si no me voy. ¿Fue peligroso? Sí, fue peligroso. ¿Por qué? Porque nos bueno, venimos escondidos. Chavalo, guys, guys, I'm going to go to the chat. Guys, I'm getting a DJ chat. I want to go to the other people. Sí, esto es que la gente americana está bien. Guys, 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 I'm still in the middle chat. Pongamos uno, si va a encontrar uno, lo matan porque no lo conozca uno. Midway through my interview with Miguel Yate, I began to put two and two together. When Miguel referred to having to hide a lot while crossing the border, he wasn't referring to coyotes. He may have been referring to one of the many civilian border militias that often lurk the perimeter of the border fence. The local sheriff does not welcome their presence on Arizona's border with Mexico. What? Hold on. ...their presence. Wait, th there's no mag in there. On Arizona's border with Mexico, but they say they're not breaking the law. In many documented cases, these militia groups are alleged to have opened fire indiscriminately on migrants crossing the border fence illegally. Sí. ¿Tienes familia o amigos aquí? No, no tengo. Vengo solo. No tengo nada. Solo. Solo. Solo vengo. Vas a hacer asilo político. Eh, sí. Uh, ¿es, es fácil para hacer eso. Pues no sé, fíjate. Me concedo un trabajo, ¿va? me voy con usted. Necesito recuperar mi, mi familia, más seguro. ¿Tienes una esposa? Sí, tengo. Sí, sí por eso tengo que salir. ¿Qué tipo de trabajo no, te gusta? Pues lo que hay, lo que hay, yo voy a trabajar. Lo, lo que sea, sí, voy sí. a hacer. Voy a hacer. ¿Puedes hablar inglés? No, no, no puedo. No, solo español. Pero puedes decir cosas como hello en inglés, ¿sí? Puede ser, sí, aprendiendo. ¿Hay mucha gente, gente de pobreza en Guatemala? Bien, hay. ¿Y cuando tú fuiste joven fue po pobreza también? Sí, por mi pobreza. No tengo casa, no tengo terreno. Es la misma. Por eso tengo que ir a, a ganar dinero para superar mi familia. ¿Dónde vive en tu familia ahora? ¿En una casa? Pues en un... Oh, ya, 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 ya. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm over it. It's long video, it's long video given the amount of people I saw gathered nearby. So I figured the best place to continue doing interviews was actually in line, where Border Patrol agents were checking migrants' passports and photographing them for documentation purposes. Despite a gentleman's earlier claim that we have no idea who these people are because they sh Yeah, I was in a letter. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. Guys, guys, I wasn't even making a weird comment earlier. Look, 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 look. I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll show It's this, it's this shit that, guys, People who take advantage of fucking, of fucking people's like fucking hunger and shit and they make videos where they fucking make them like challenges for fucking food and shit, dude. But...
Kapoti on Naughty Biscuits, Chocolate Cookies and Just Jelly. Like, what the fuck? Oh, wait, hold on. This looks good. Oh my god! Shahanuron noodles, naughty biscuits, and just jelly. Brother, no water, no no fuck, no liquid, just fucking this dry food. Are you kidding me? Oh, dude, hold on. Oh! Wait, hold on! Guys, guys, I'm watching the video, man. Shh, dude, guys, chat is funny, saying some dumb shit. I'm reading it, dude. I'm watching the video. I don't know what you want from me. Guys, it's so dystopian. It's so, like, far out. I don't know what you want from me. It's just so stupid.